Hi, welcome to the conversation. The Pentagon has pinned its hopes on the F-35 Joint Strike Stealth Warfighter as it tries to maintain its domination of the air for the next 30 years. The plane's awesome when it works. Its cutting edge technology allows it to detect the newest stealth aircraft from our adversaries much earlier than those aircraft can pick up the F-35. And in air-to-air -air combat, that's everything, because if you can always identify your target and get your missiles away before they even see you, you win every time. Some armchair generals have predicted that the F-35 isn't as maneuverable or capable in dogfights as earlier U.S. fighters, but that's pretty much irrelevant because they're never going to be in any dogfights. Now, the pilots will wear a helmet that works in conjunction with six external cameras. This gives them the ability to see through their own aircraft and fire their weapons without having to turn the plane and lock on visually in the traditional way. The US is planning on buying more than 2,400 of these babies, and they'll come in three different varieties, one for conventional takeoff and landing, one for short takeoff and vertical landing, and one for catapult-assisted takeoff with hook-assisted landing on an aircraft carrier. In 2001, after Democratic President Bill Clinton's administration greenlit the R&D phase, the Bush team was presented with prototypes by defense contracting juggernauts Lockheed Martin and Boeing. It chose Lockheed, awarding it the most lucrative contract ever for a weapon system. Of course, under a White House and Pentagon that served the defense contracting class, the project was mismanaged throughout Bush's time in office, causing it to run more than $160 billion over budget. The men Obama installed to run the program have taken a much tougher stance against Lockheed men, finally began holding them accountable for wasting taxpayer dollars through their frequent mistakes. So this is yet another example of Obama's team cleaning up Bush's mess. Although you won't get that candid of response from Obama's people. An old adage in, the, in this business is you should fly before you buy. Make sure the design is stable and that things work before you actually go into production. Frank Kendall is the Under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition, the Pentagon's chief weapons buyer. We started uh, buying airplanes a good year before we started flight testing. So you buy before you fly? In that case, yes. Just saying it, that doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> uh, I refer to that decision as acquisition malpractice. This May 2010 Pentagon memo detailed the flawed assumptions, unrealistic estimates, and a general reluctance to accept unfavorable information that put the program seven years behind schedule and more than $160 billion over budget. Zooming out, whether the plane allows the U.S. to rule the skies is the most important thing, as other military powers like the Chinese and Russians are developing next-generation stealth fighters that could easily defeat the previous generation of American F-class fighters. The U.S. will share the F-35 with its major allies, the U.K., Australia, Canada, Italy, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, Turkey, Israel, Singapore, and Japan. 